What's going on guys, Spencer here with HM Massage, back with another video. Today we are doing a deep dive into Frozen Shoulder. Frozen Shoulder, aka Adhesive Capsulitis, is a condition in which the ball and socket joint that makes up the shoulder joint and the shoulder capsule, which is this strong, thick connective tissue that surrounds the joint, becomes inflamed, adhesed, irritated, and ultimately leads to a lot of pain, reduced range of motion, sometimes very little range of motion, and can make daily activities, your ADLs, very difficult. The full cause of frozen shoulder is still kind of unknown, though there is a correlation for people who don't move their arms or shoulders enough, especially post-injury, but today we're going to do our best to talk about frozen shoulder backed by science and explain how massage therapy can help frozen shoulder so that we can improve the quality of life of the person suffering from this condition. So in the background, we'll be warming up for the massage. You're going to warm up the superficial muscles first. Take your time here. Really make sure those fibers are welcoming you in because this is a very advanced massage technique. We have to be careful. There are a lot of nerve bundles, arteries, veins, all within the axillary fossa. So you don't just want any Joe Schmo running in and pressing into your armpit. No offense to Joe Schmoes. So starting at the surface, you want to warm up every muscle attaching to the shoulder. Warm up pec major, the biceps, the triceps, the lats, the deltoids, the trapezius. All of those big superficial muscles we need to warm up. As we're doing that, we can talk about the three phases that people usually experience when dealing with frozen shoulder. The first phase is the freezing phase. This is the beginning of adhesive capsulitis. You will slowly experience more pain in your shoulder, and as the pain worsens, you have increasingly limited range of motion. This phase can last anywhere from six weeks to nine months. After the freezing phase, you'll enter the frozen phase. It's still not as painful as the ghosting phase, in which they don't text you back, but during the frozen phase, the pain may actually reduce down. However, the stiffness and limited range of motion of frozen shoulder is at its worst. Your activities of daily living, or ADLs, may be very difficult, and this is when the shoulder is going to be the most stuck or frozen. This can last anywhere from four to six months at its peak, before it enters the third phase, the thawing phase. On its own, the shoulder will eventually start to thaw out, and the motion will slowly improve back to a normal or close to normal state, but this phase can last anywhere from six months to two years. You put it all together, you can quickly see how frozen shoulder can be a condition affecting somebody for anywhere from six months to multiple years, really impacting quality of life. And ultimately, quality of life is what we live for. You can have all the money in the world, but it means nothing if you're constantly in pain. With all that said, let's actually talk about getting into the rotator cuff itself and what we're going to do to attack frozen shoulder. The primary muscle we need to be focusing on, as far as massage therapists go, is subscapularis. In order to get to subscapularis, the deepest rotator cuff muscle, we're going to have to first warm up through pec major, the lats, serratus anterior, and all of that thick skin and fascia in the way. We're going to be doing this by taking our client's arm into external rotation, and that's going to open up the armpit or the axillary fossa. From here, we're going to follow the length of the triceps down, 
gliding to where the triceps meet up with the lats and I'm just gonna sit there and sink my fingers in to that meaty spot. So hang out there as we push in deeper. But the goal is as that area melts away, we can sink our fingers into the subscapular fossa on the inside of the scapula and begin to work the fibers of the deepest rotator cuff. Once that area is thoroughly warmed up, I'll then have the client horizontally flex their arm, bring it across their body, and that is going to close the subscap, allowing us to work with a shortened muscle. With my bottom hand, I'm supporting the entire shoulder and shoulder blade, and then with my other hand, I'm sinking in, keeping communication open with the client and really finding the fibers of subscap, continuously working closer and closer to the actual ball and socket joint. My goal will be to work my fingers up to crawl them up as close to that joint head as I can, as long as it's within their comfort level, because once we are in this position with the closed arm, the scapula supported, and my hand working in through the armpit, this is where the real magic happens. This is also a great time to talk about how we can reduce inflammation with massage, and that is such an important feature of fixing subscapularis. Massage, of course, helps increase blood flow to the muscles and joint. That's not only going to break up adhesions, but it's going to reduce inflammation, as well as increase the temperature of the muscles, improving elasticity and flexibility. You'll also be releasing endorphins during a massage, but I want to go back and focus on reducing inflammation since that is such a major help when it comes to the body's healing process. So the body's healing process sends inflammation to an injured area. However, at times, the body can overdo it, which can lead to edema, local hypoxia, and accumulation of noxious substances, as well as phagocytosis of healthy tissues. Phagocytosis is the process of living cells or phagocytes ingesting or engulfing other cells and particles. And in a study I'm linking, it's shown that massage can speed up the time course of inflammatory signaling. Essentially, massage therapy can reduce the signal for inflammation, causing less inflammation, as well as cycling any of that stagnant blood out of the area. Of course, it helps to break up any adhesed areas of the capsulitis, such as the ligaments and tendons, Massage will also help relax all of the surrounding musculature and ligaments and tendons that are overcompensating for the stability of the shoulder joint when the capsule itself isn't working entirely well. That was a lot of information, but I just wanted to back up the idea that massage is going to help people, and at the very least, it is not going to hurt people. But switching our focus back, I know a lot of the footage is just of a closed armpit here, so it can be really hard to see what I'm doing. But taking those fingers, finding tender spots, finding adhesed areas, working circles, and just generally the more space you can work, the better. And you're just going to keep massaging this area until you feel that it is adequately released. I think my footage went on for about 25 minutes originally, so I spent a long time here. However, once you're done, we're going to take the arm out of flexion, and we're going to go the opposite. We need to stretch out all the areas we just worked, take it into external rotation to the best of the client's ability. If they can't go very far, don't push it. 
And a great move or stretch I like to do is put their hand behind their head, once again, to the limit that they can, and then just gently press on the elbow back to give a very nice stretch to the glenohumeral joint. Soften up the area, work anything else you need to, and then tuck the arm away and move onward. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and it helped you out. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys on the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day.